the Lord be with you. Good morning. And welcome to our service today for the Two Valleys Churches. Um, I hope you are, have had a reasonable week um, and uh, are managing to cope with this most recent lockdown. And uh, thank you for tuning in and joining in this short act of worship for this week. So just let's be still for a moment or two as we begin. O Lord, hear our prayers, not according to the poverty of our asking, but according to the richness of your grace, so that our lives may conform to those desires which accord with your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city, where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Psalm 27 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid, and though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me, and set me high upon a rock. And now shall he lift up my head above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness, I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy upon me and answer me. My heart tells of your word. Seek my face. Your face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor cast your servant away in displeasure. You have been my helper. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of those who lie in wait for me. Deliver me not into the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me and those who breathe out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and he shall comfort your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Hide us, 
moment of stillness as we reflect and call to mind our sins and the sins of the world. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning's first reading is Joshua, chapter 1, and we're reading verses 1 to 9. God appoints Joshua to succeed Moses as leader and says, Be strong and very courageous. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, My servant Moses is dead. Now proceed to cross the Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the Israelites. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I promised to Moses. From the wilderness and the Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea in the west shall be your territory. No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, for you shall put this people in possession of the land that I swore to their ancestors to give them. Only be strong and very courageous being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle from Isaiah 43 I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people who I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness, and rivers in the desert. The reading is taken from Romans 12, verses 9 to 21. St Paul instructs Christians to rejoice in hope, to be patient in tribulation, and to be constant in prayer. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honour. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, Live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The Benedictus You will guide us with your counsel, O God, and afterwards receive us with glory. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You will guide us with your counsel, O God, and afterwards receive us with glory.
shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Words written 600 years ago by a lady called Julian of Norwich. Words which have echoed down the centuries and do, I think, absolutely need to be heard in our own troubled times. As do the words of St Paul, quoted in a letter to the churches this past week, from our two archbishops and the Bishop of London, and which we heard in our second reading today from Romans chapter 12. Paul is instructing the Christian community in Rome to be kind, be active, be generous, plenty of things like that, and specifically three things. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, continue instant in prayer. Julian of Norwich I find a fascinating character. We know precious little about her except she was born in 1343. She was an anchorite, a lady hermit that is, and a mystic, who lived alone in her tiny cell for more than 40 years, had food brought to her, was sick and near to death three times, and was the author of a remarkable book, Revelations of Divine Love, possibly the first ever published book by a female author. We don't even know her real name. She is rather confusingly known as Julian because it was to St Julian's church in Norwich that her cell was attached. Her links with us today are only too clear. She was born during a pandemic, the bubonic plague which we know as the Black Death, which killed 50 million people, that is 60% of the entire European population. Interestingly, it was at that time thought to have originated in China, but don't tell Ronald Schunk. Having survived the Black Death, she was the victim of a second wave, as it were, when she was 33, and having been given the last rites, presumably in intensive care, she had a near-death experience before recovering. She was self-isolated for the rest of her days and lived to a ripe age. Communicating only with those who chose to linger outside her house and talking from behind curtains to draw upon her wisdom, assured that all shall be well. So we have three instructions from St Paul and we have Dame Julian's response. The first instruction in Paul's letter is rejoice in hope. And hope was the hallmark of Dame Julian's life. During her illness, 
she had received visions of Christ recorded in revelations of divine love. All too closely she saw the suffering around her and it was revealed to her that it was not, as the church taught in those days, a punishment from God, nor simply the consequence of men's disobedience, as the church also taught. But, on the contrary, suffering was actually, and astonishingly, God's love, extending to every nook and cranny, seeking us out and meeting us in our extremity. Not only did she experience deeply the suffering of mankind, she sought to make sense of it, showing that God does not stay above the fray, but in solidarity enters into our pain, our fear, our anxiety, and suffers with us. Her unorthodoxy has drawn criticism at times, still does. But Dame Julian had a brutally honest trust in the love of God, and therefore in his promise, all shall be well. And so she wrote, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. For her it was a sure reason for hope, and hope is the opposite of fear, is incompatible with fear. Hope casts out fear. All shall be well. This is not mere facile optimism, not a case of glass half full for some, glass half empty for others, and not the platitude uttered in Browning's poem, Pippa Passes, where you may remember the well-known, rather something of a cliché, God's in his heaven, all's right with the world. God may be in his heaven, but all is manifestly not right in the world. By the way, the words when quoted out of context entirely miss the irony. Pippa, the speaker, is at that moment passing a house in which all sorts of unspeakably awful things are happening, of which she is unaware. Nor is it the disingenuous optimism of Pongloss in Voltaire's satirical novel Candide. All is for the best in the best of all possible worlds, he said. Which is really an admission that there's nothing we can do about it anyway. Whatever will be, will be. Not much hope there. Yet, hope springs eternal. And that is the first of Paul's three instructions to the Romans. Rejoice in hope. It is not the end of the world, but the beginning of a new existence, a sure reason for hope and confidence. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Back to St Paul for the second instruction. Be patient in tribulation. There is one other thing we know about Dame Julian of Norwich. Her mascot, apparently, was a hazelnut. She saw it as an emblem of God's relationship with this world. He made it, he loves it, he keeps it. A truth for our times and a token of our salvation. He has the whole wide world in his hands, as we sometimes sing. The hazelnut was the opposite of the medieval allegorical concept of the danse macabre, the dance of death which people saw as an allegory of the all-conquering power of death, the leveller, where in a godless world the skeletons do a ceremonial dance over the graves. To this day, one of the features of Halloween. St Paul, like Dame Julian, knew suffering all right. He was fond of listing the ordeals he had endured, and what a list! Three times, he wrote, I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, I was in the deep for a night and a day, I journeyed often in peril of robbery by my own countrymen, I was in perils of the heathen, in the wilderness, in the sea. And in addition, St Paul had a so-called thorn in the flesh, probably some unattractive or disabling condition, no one quite knows what it was. But Paul was nothing if not patient. We too, in the midst of lockdown, are challenged to be patient. We may at times feel crushed by our cramped and unstructured lives, depleted of resources, deprived of normal contact with our families and friends, bereaved and battered and bored, denied so many of life's pleasures and necessities. Patience 
is the name of the game, says Paul. And prayer. Continue instant in prayer. That's the third instruction from St. Paul and from the archbishops. And I quote, We call upon the Church of England to make this month of lockdown a month of prayer. This is one of the fundamental disciplines that shape our Christian life. We know that we are in the faithful hands of the risen Christ, who knows our weaknesses, tiredness and struggles, and whose steadfast love endures forever. And the Christian writer C.S. Lewis says this, The discipline of prayer reminds me that without generosity, without vibrancy, without goodwill, I'm not the person I want to be. And I'm not the person that my friends and colleagues need me to be. I need God's help with that. And that is why I pray. At the university, I was lectured by C.S. Lewis every week. His lectures were, as you can imagine, inspiring. Everything I know about Chaucer and Milton comes from him. But we fortunate undergraduates had no idea that his beloved wife was dying a lingering death at the time from bone cancer. His courageous acceptance of it as part of God's plan is very clear in his moving book, A Grief Observed, where he describes how the loss te test tested to the uttermost his Christian faith. But he did continue to pray. I ask myself, do I really feel the same need? The young poet Tennyson composed his great poem In Memoriam following the death of his closest and dearest friend and fellow student, a loss which haunted him for the rest of his life and drove him to his knees. From the depths of his grief he wrote these lines. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Wherefore let thy voice rise like a fountain night and day. For what are men better than sheep or goats, if, knowing God, they lift not hands of prayer? For so the whole round earth is every way bound by gold chains about the feet of God. Dame Julian of Norwich, for one, was certainly bound by those gold chains. You and I ignore those chains of prayer at our peril. C.S. Lewis and St. Paul and Tennyson and Dame Julian of Norwich are speaking to us today. All is well. God's love is available to all who seek, not only now but for the years to come and for all eternity. And the secret lies in those instructions of St. Paul's. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer then indeed all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Yes. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our rock, our refuge in the midst of these swirling seas of uncertainty. You never change. You are steadfast and sure, totally reliable. In the midst of a second lockdown, we look to you for comfort, for guidance and for hope. We believe, Lord God, that you hold everything in your hands. There is nothing that takes you by surprise or over which you do not have control. We trust you that what is happening in our world is in some way part of your overall master plan. We trust you because we cannot see it from our perspective. But we know that you are a God of love in whose image each of us, each human being is made 
and that you are concerned for each one of us. We thank you for the prospect of a COVID-19 vaccine, for the skill and knowledge that you have given to scientists and medics working on this. We pray, Lord, for your protection on the whole process, that the deep desire for a vaccine would not override any safety considerations with this totally new type of treatment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're being encouraged to pray more this month, specifically for our nation, for our leaders, our health and essential services, and all those who suffer. So under each of those headings, there will be space for our own personal prayers. So prayers for our nation. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for our nation, that we have political stability and are at peace. We pray for unity among all the population to respond to the presence of COVID-19 with due consideration for others, following guidelines and doing what they can to contain the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we bring before you our government and its health advisers. Please give wisdom to all having to make difficult decisions that impact our daily lives, our jobs and our well-being. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for all health and care workers and all working in essential services, for strength, for courage, for wisdom, and also for the opportunity for relaxation, to be able to switch off from what they are doing day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we bring to you those who are suffering at this time in body, mind or spirit, those in hospital with COVID, those whose treatment has been interrupted or postponed by the demands of COVID, those unwell and those known to us who are lonely or in need of your healing touch for whatever reason. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you once again for joining with us this week and um, do look out for this coming Thursday at six o'clock where we'll join together for a live broadcast through Facebook um, just to pray for our country at this time and uh, as a way of um, supporting those people who really need, need our prayers, our key workers um, and those who may be struggling um, through this time. So six o'clock Thursday and do keep an eye on the Facebook page, the Two Valleys Churches group. Um, as we post relevant resources your way um, in the coming weeks. So I commend all of that to you. I'll see you next week. <laughs>